hard to believe we've been here for four weeks um, as of today. So this is our fourth week in Ecuador. We haven't had a whole lot of time to explore the country and to um, do the things we wanted to do because of the coronavirus um, pandemic. And we've been changing our lives a bit as we've tried to adjust to this. But four weeks in, um, we haven't been able to do a whole lot now, have we, huh? Oh no. Happy Easter, everyone. And yeah, we are coming to you from Cuenca, Ecuador in our living room. Yeah, um, I think the only thing we've been able to get out to at this point is to go out and see the markets. Um, I think you've enjoyed that. Oh, definitely. Uh, at least it is going out. Actually, it was the one thing that I was most excited about coming to Ecuador. I've seen about the Mercados for years and years. And uh, they haven't disappointed, even though there's about 10% of the uh, merchants there at this point, it still has not been disappointing. But we are having more deliveries done and um, actually just being a little bit more cautious, just as everyone should be. And we are definitely social distancing at this point. I'm hoping that uh, many of you are taking advantage of the uh, virtual services today um, versus getting together with uh, others. I, I know this is a difficult time on an Easter Sunday, but uh, we have to do it. It's, uh, it's very important. Well, since our last video, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've learned that I can cut my own hair. Julie was afraid to touch it, but with everything being closed down, except for grocery stores and some essential things, there's not a whole lot of services out there. So I think I did okay. You can leave a comment, tell me if I did okay with my haircut. Um, but you know, we gotta just get by with what we can. Um, if I did a really bad job, I figured I'd just go bald and then you would know for sure that I really jacked it up. Um, but a lot of things have changed or not going the way that we had intended. Um, today, as a matter of fact, is the 463rd uh, day for um, this founding of Cuenca by Spain. So this would have been a celebration not only for the Easter day, but this would have been what's known as Cuenca days. And we would have had a uh, celebration here because of the founding of Cuenca. So we're missing that local celebration, unfortunately. And of course, we're missing what we thought would be a great time to be here for the Easter celebrations here in Cuenca, Ecuador, which more or less have been scrubbed. There, there are different virtual things going on. The Monsignor actually on Good Friday uh, flew a helicopter through and uh, actually I believe he, he did it throughout most of the big cities in Ecuador. And he essentially the people came out on their balconies, they came out of the homes and they waved to him and he waved back. And I know that made some people feel very good. And this is definitely a, a tough time uh, for everyone. Everyone wants to celebrate Easter. We, we definitely, especially as Christians, want to uh, acknowledge Easter. As of a few days ago, the uh, Ecuadorian government received several uh, test kits. As a matter of fact, I believe it was about 200,000. So the testing has increased and therefore the uh, numbers of infections have also increased at this point, which of course means that our restrictions are still in place. And as of this coming Monday, they will have a traffic light system that they will be uh, implementing, which will be red, yellow, and green in each province. And with that, um, the red obviously means it will be the strongest restrictions. The yellow means they're going to start relaxing some. And the green means that uh, they've relaxed a lot. However, with that being said, you will still be using masks, gloves, and social distancing, even with a green light. So with these extra testing uh, that they're able to do now because of this couple hundred thousand kits that came in, um, the numbers did increase a little bit. Um, we popped up to over 7,000 cases in the country of Ecuador. 73% uh, of these cases are in the Guayas province where Guayaquil is, which is a large city of over 3 million people in the metro area down on the coast. And that's the hardest hit. That's kind of like the New York of Ecuador. That's where it's really getting slammed. Here in the Azuay province, 
We have, I think it's about 150 cases as of today. So about 150 cases in the Azuay province and I think 130 of them in Cuenca. And with us having several hundred thousand, I think about 350,000 um, in Cuenca, about 600,000 in our province. Um, it's a fairly low uh, rate of infection in comparison to a lot of areas. To give you a comparison, the United States as of today had 1,611 cases per million of coronavirus infections. The country of Cuenca has, I'm sorry, the country of Ecuador has 411 cases per million. Um, and so we're about one fourth of what's going on in the US. If you look at our worst province, um, Guayas province with Guayaquil, uh, where 73% of the cases are, it's not going well there. Um, but if you did the math and saw that they've got 5,000, um, I think 5,200 some cases in the Guayas province in a city of 3 million, they're roughly about the same as what the US is as a country on average. And if you took Ecuador as a country and made it a state in the United States, 42 states in the U.S. would have a higher infection rate than what we have here in Ecuador. This graphic taken from today shows 1,615 cases per million population in the now, U.S. Now, unfortunately, in 411 a lot of the news Ecuador. outlets in the United States choose to try to make news rather than report news, and sometimes will exaggerate or try to um, make things look more dramatic than they, than they are. Um, the Guayas province is being hit badly. There's a lot going on there. Mortuaries are closed. People cannot um, have the mortuary come pick up a body of a deceased relative. Being a city of over 3 million people in the metro area, hundreds of people die any given day. And without people coming to pick up the bodies of their deceased, it makes an issue. Uh, the police or the military have to go and pick up bodies of those that pass away. Uh, certain outlets in the United States have chosen to try to jump on these body collections and sometimes bodies were being put outside the house because of the delay in having uh, a dead relative in the house is not comforting and can cause a smell. People put the body outside. Some of these outlets made it look as though all these people that are dying or these bodies that are being picked up are coronavirus people, victims that are dying. It's not that everybody is dying of coronavirus. These are people that could be dying of heart attack, stroke, cancer, influenza, anything else. But coronavirus is one of the things that will potentially have caused some of these deaths, but it's not every death that's being recorded in Guayaquil is a coronavirus death. Um, these fires that you're seeing on the streets, uh, on some of these videos, some of these fires that are being set are because people are trying to get the attention of the government to come and pick up the bodies. The Guayas province is very, very much stretched thin on their resources and medical capabilities, the ability to pick up these people that have, just, have died, but not everybody that's dying is dying from the coronavirus. Just to be clear, and no, it's not a great thing to have to have bodies out on the street, but understand that the, um, the media is unfortunately tr making this into something that really it is not, and it's really not fair, but unfortunately a lot of the U.S. news outlets, and you probably know which ones they are, uh, try to make news rather than report news, and then unfortunately, if you really want to get, get a good feel of what's going on here in Ecuador, look for an outlet that's not US based. Look at Australia, look at Britain, look at Ecuador. There's a website called Cuenca High Life that can give you some um, English versions of what's going on here in, um, in Cuenca and in Ecuador. Um, it's not the doom and gloom all the time that you get out of what you're hearing from uh, some of the US outlets. There are some YouTubers uh, that we've mentioned a few times before, JP and Amelia, and Amelia and JP, I'm not sure exactly how they put it. Um, anyway, they are working very hard right now to raise money for the people of the Guayas province. A lot of these people live um, as 
actually they live on a day-to-day -day basis. They work for the day, they pay for food that evening, and they feed their families. And uh, it's similar to what the United States has with many people where we live paycheck to paycheck, but these people live actually on a day-to-day -day basis. And without being able to go out and make an income for the day, they are not eating and their pets are not eating. So um, JP and Amelia are pouring their hearts out and they are trying very hard to uh, help these people in that extremely stricken area. It's, uh, it's a very sad situation and these people are starving. So um, we certainly want to uh, do everything we can as well to help them. It's kind of funny with Amelia and JP, they're, uh, they've done a lot of videos in Cuenca. They lived here for a couple years before live, moving down to the coast. I almost feel like we know them. We, we've messaged with them before we moved here. They actually moved down to the coast about a month, month and a half before we came. So in a way, we kind of feel like we're friends with them, like we know them, but we really have never even met with them. But hopefully when this is all over, we can get together and go have dinner with them. But for, for the moment, um, you know, they're trying to do what they can to, to help out in Ecuador. And if you want some good information on the Cuenca area immediately, because we're not able to get out and do some of the stuff we want to do, the videos that Amelia and JP have done in the past have been really, really informative and I'm going to put a link down below so that you can find Amelia and JP and you can uh, check out some of their videos as well. Um, regarding the Guayas province and actually throughout Ecuador, Julie mentioned people are working on a day-to-day -day basis to try to make money in a lot of cases. The government's doing what they can by providing a $60 uh, stipend basically to each person living below the poverty level. If you're making less than $500 here in Ecuador, the government is putting out $60 to help you to uh, get by. But obviously that's not enough for uh, people to take care of a family with. So um, if you do have a, a want or desire to help somebody in, the, in Ecuador, again, Amelia and JP are trying to do some things to raise some money and there'll be a link that we're providing to uh, go check out their channel and check out their video. Here's a quick screenshot of Amelia and JP's travel channel page on YouTube if you're looking for it. Recently I was on Facebook and there was uh, a few groups that were recommended to me for Ecuador expats. Um, I believe there's one that's called Cuenca expats. There's several actually. And they are uh, fantastic outlets for us to figure out what there is to do in this community. However, <laughs> right now we have four walls to, uh, to do things in and that's about it. Um, Anyway, I suggest if you are interested in coming to Ecuador, becoming an expat here, spending three to six months, spending several years here, to do a little research and look for these groups. Uh, they will start populating if you just start writing in Ecuador and expats. Um, and I, I feel like they're a very good resource for us, for restaurants, for actually knowing what's going on in the country right now because numerous uh, papers here are obviously in Spanish and Warren and I do not know Spanish fluently. Um, I can read a little bit, but not enough to get by. And uh, there's also a paper uh, that he mentioned earlier, Cuenca High Life. And it is a wonderful uh, paper for gringos, as they like to say here. Um, so I would encourage you, if you are interested in coming to Ecuador, to look at Cuenca High Life. I believe it's CuencaHighLife.com. And uh, I do feel as though um, these, these groups are keeping us informed. They're giving us a lot of information on a daily basis, and it is great to, to know how others are dealing with this crisis. And if you are an expat here in Ecuador, if you want to get together with us when this crisis is over, show us around, give us your cost of living assessment, let us know what you think of Ecuador, or how this crisis has impacted you or affected you. Um, give us an idea of what it's like to live here. Um, Maybe we go do some of the, uh, the tourist things as well. We're, we would love to get some local ideas of what's going on here and what things are like. And if you want to be a tour guide for us in the future, give us a message, contact us, connect with us. 
we'll be glad to uh, to try to spend some time with you once this is all over with. Um, and of course, please subscribe and give us a like. Add some messages down below. Give us some ideas of some things you'd like to see or what you would want us to report on. Um, we'll try to do our best with the limited resources we have at this moment. Of course, being four weeks in Ecuador, what we've seen mostly is inside of our Airbnb, which is a nice Airbnb, but we really thought we'd be much further along into our adventures and exploring at this point when we chose to do this back in July of 2019. Um, it is what it is and we're going to make the best of it. We want to keep you informed. We want to hear from you. We want to get some ideas from you. So please don't be shy. Leave a message. Also give us a sub subscribe. Hit the subscribe button over here. Hit the like button over here. Um, you know, we, we want to know that uh, uh, we're meeting your expectations and your needs. Well, everyone, please continue to practice social distancing and uh, please continue to watch what we have. Um, as he said before, please give us your comments, suggestions, and we definitely are limited at this point. We are not able to bring you the uh, the views of the country and the adventures that we plan to have, but many of you, actually all of you, should be in about the same type of situation we're in now. And we do hope you stay safe and um, healthy. And happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter.